Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at player props here for a Thursday night NBA slate. A couple teams trying to avoid elimination here. Um, so we will take a look at some of the uh, obviously player props we've got available tonight. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Continue to follow along with us as we are bringing you each and every playoff game with the video and these player props each time we have games like tonight. Uh, and also uh, want you to head to the lines.com. Make sure you're using that props tool. Uh, make sure shopping the lines for the best NBA player props from each of those odds makers out there. Also win a gift card. Uh, for 25 bucks at play.thelines.com, uh, where we give you that NBA Daily Challenge. Get all those right, and you do, can win a $25 Amazon gift card there. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com. Find those listings in your area, such as what we've got for tonight's play of props. Nate, let's get into it. Yeah, it might seem like I'm just drinking uh, haterade here, but I, I like James Harden under... It's specifically with the assists, I'm not necessarily thinking he goes under in points, uh, but I think that the passing is not going to be there for him tonight in this particular matchup. It's You look at the team numbers for the Sixers, I mean, they've just been atrocious taking care of the ball. A 1.1 assist to turnover ratio in their last three in this series, getting 21 assists per game total. So for Harden to get 10 dimes, you're saying he's getting half the team's assists, sure. Uh, but he's not commanding that type of attention that he can spray that amount of assists. He's not rolling with Embiid in the pick and roll because Embiid's not healthy. He's got he's averaging eight assists per game in this series, along with nice four and a half turnovers, which happens to be his prop. Uh, you know, appealing to maybe take the over there. Uh, seven assists, five turnovers the last time out. I think he'll be a little bit better taking care of the ball. Um, but Toronto isn't going to give up much. I mean, they gave they gave up the fifth lowest assist to turnover ratio at home last season. We talked in the game video about how Philly scoring just 98 points per game in these last three, how they scored about 103 in the season against Toronto. Um, and, and there's just nothing easy coming. But what Toronto will give you, he'll, they'll give James Harden those step back threes if he wants to take them. They allow the sixth highest percentage from deep at home sixth lowest percentage inside the arc. So what I'm basing this on under nine and a half assists, which is a nice plus 100 bet um, is that Harden's going to, if he reads what his team needs, he's going to, they're going to need him for his offense, not his playmaking with him beat her. He's going to have to shoot a lot of threes, uh, try to get to the rim on his own and not look to set guys up as much. Uh, so whether he gets over his 20 and a half points prop or not, I think he goes under this amount of assists. <laughs> That is some quality analysis, uh, just taking different forms of game theory uh, and, and a bit of, uh, you know, stats on what Toronto does and does not do well uh, on defense, especially at home. I like all of it. Uh, I, I definitely, you know, th- especially when you've got guys averaging and that's going to be kind of a theme for me and some of the picks we talk about here in these player props is you've got a guy averaging, in, especially in these series, less than what his prop is at. And and I feel like usually the the, the props are just almost game by game in the playoffs with, you know, counting for what they did in the previous game, which is usually not more than right to to more than two nights prior at this point in in the playoffs. Um, And so this still just feels way too high, especially considering you're getting even money here on DraftKings for that under nine and a half assists. I really like that. So um, continuing the theme of guards uh, that I actually think are undervalued here. uh, So Jalen Brunson, 20.5 Twenty and a half points is his prop minus one ten at DK, and uh, I mean he, he's averaging more. He hasn't gotten less than twenty three points at any point in this series. Uh, in, in the last uh, in, in the regular season in, in three matchups, he had twenty two plus in two of those three. Uh, so now he's got twenty two plus in whatever that is now, right? Like seven, eight of his last nine or whatever against them. Um, you would, the the fear here of taking it over with his points is that. Uh, Luca's back and that would interfere with his you know usage rate he obviously had more than uh, 20 points in, in the last game that, that when Luca came back uh, in that one and then you know the usage rate was just as high at, at about 30 percent uh, in the last two that Luca has played it, it, including assists uh, you know three and a half as well for him which is I mean slightly under than what, what he was averaging when Luca's not playing but he, he's getting those points now and I think he's really now seen as kind of a two guard um, you know and, and, and in Utah as we continue to talk 
talk about since the beginning of the season at this point and up until now maintaining their their bad wing defense uh, and top of the perimeter defense and just trying to rely on Rudy to erase their mistakes. And it's just a lot different now when when their teams are poised to, you know, and, and prep to play against that, uh, especially in a series where you're playing against, you know, against each other, like we said, like at every other night, every two, three nights, whatever. Um, it, it, yeah, the, Jalen Brunson is going to continue to cook is the point. Twenty and a half points is too low for him if Luca is there or isn't there. Uh, and so I, I happily take that uh, that that prop. Yeah, I mean, with Luca back now, he's going to draw Royce O'Neal um, when possible for the Jazz. And who does that leave to guard Brunson, who's too good to take off the floor right now? Um, they're talking about how how handsomely he's going to be paid in the off season after what he's done here. I mean, he's just made mincemeat of Conley. He's made mincemeat of Royce O'Neal when he has to switch out. I mean, he's too small and quick for him. And Donnie Mitchell is going to play through a hamstring injury. Already was struggling defensively in this series. Jordan Clarkson is the other guy who's going to be out there. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a lot of bad defenders. And then Rudy Gobert standing in the middle. And Brunson and, and Luca both seem to know how to finish around him. <clears throat> or spray to their teammates. Uh, so the points and assists, slightly better odds. Don't like, don't hate that. Also like another Maverick here, uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, who we talked, we, we took last time out and he's, he went over 18 and a half PRA in the third quarter in a blowout. Uh, we expect this one to be a little closer in Utah and his props still at 18 and a half at DraftKings. Uh, not the greatest odds there. You can go up to 19 and a half PRA at FanDuel and get slightly better odds at minus 113. Or you can just take the points, 12 and a half points, plus 100. Uh, also don't hate just taking his rebounds. I think both of those things will be there for him. He's averaging, I mean, here's the key. First off, averaging 42.8 minutes per game in this series. Does not come off the floor, like we said with Brunson. In those 43 minutes, 12.2 points, five five and a half rebounds, two and a half assists. He's a plus 45. Uh, you know, he was shooting really well from deep, 44% on the road since the start of February. And uh, he, he's done well against Utah, a 148 offensive rating this season in four meetings, 15 points per game, four and a half rebounds, two and a half assists, and shooting 41 and a half percent from three. So, Give him 42 minutes instead of 33. I think he definitely gets over this uh, these combined stats. Yeah, I'm happy to go back uh, to the well with Finney Smith here in this one. Same exact prop. Obviously, we don't love uh, the drop in, in our odds here at minus 130 um, you know, uh, on DK. But I, 19 and a half on FanDuel, minus 113. I think I would still take that. I mean, we felt pretty comfortable with it. They obviously didn't finish, need to finish uh, too much at the end of the game there. T- so we kind of saw him stall after he, he really got his prop pretty early for us and then really didn't need much more. I don't know that we're going to see a, a 30 point blowout in this one, but I mean, I honestly still wouldn't be surprised if they win by double digits. And even if that is the case, you know, Dorian Finney Smith will be in there until they, they, they finish this game and close it out entirely. Uh, so if the, even a double digit victory doesn't mean that he's not going to be playing, you know, into the fourth quarter uh, and picking up plenty of opportunities for those stats. And he just plays so much better with, with, uh, uh, with, with Luca in there. He's just, he's one of the, one of the guys. And that's why he's in on the roster, like, you know, Dwight Powell, who just fits in so well playing off of the guy. Uh, and either screening for him, pick and rolling, or just really, you know, getting uh, all the uh, sort of garbage uh, stats that he can. So uh, cleaning up, I, they're not garbage stats, they're very important, but he's cleaning up garbage with, with those stats. So uh, anyway, the last here, we're going to go to CP3. And this time uh, we are going to get, take him at 35 and a half points, rebounds and assists. Uh, we took him 33 and a half points and assists in the last game. Uh, he was one shy. He would have gotten the PRA in that one with six boards. Uh, six boards was a bit over. I think even if that goes down to four boards, you still feel pretty good about him at that point, right? To get roughly 31 points uh, and assists combined, which is basically what he just always gets against them is at least 31 points and assists uh, in some fashion. But, you know, between the two, um, it, you know, in his six so far this season against, well, really seven against them, um, he's averaging 36 points rebounds and assists uh in that time frame with it basically it being about uh you know 18 points 14 boards uh 14 assists rather and, and five boards 
Um, so, you know, he, he gets up there for all those. Uh, he's still playing about the 37 minutes that he's going to continue to play. And even more, if they have the chance to close this one out tonight and it's close. Um, and, you know, in closeout games last year, uh, he turned into a, a, a point God, basically, right, that we all know him to be 41 points, four boards, eight assists versus the Clips. Uh, and then versus the Nuggets to close them out, 37 points, uh, three boards and seven assists. Um, and yeah, he's, I mean, even in, in this playoffs, he's already had 35 PRA at least in, in three of the five so far. And I think you just, you know, that one that was just Jose Alvarado just eating his lunch at, throughout the game for the 18 minutes he was in there. Uh, CB3 is coming ready to go for, for this kid. He's not, that's not happening again to where now it's, he's just known as the CP3 killer. Like there won't be a CP3 killer if, if Chris Ball has anything to say about it. Uh, he's going to be ready to play tonight. And so all those stats I threw at you I feel great about but I also just I'm gonna bank my money on him to just be CP3 tonight with his ego uh, against the uh, Jose Alvarado and the Rook yeah he's the killer no nobody's a CP3 killer he comes in there and he takes your heart and it's important those closeout games at the Clippers at the Nuggets thank you uh he loves to quiet a crowd and he can get to his spots. Yeah, Alvarado did not necessarily hamper him too much. Maybe he's trying to get other guys going. He did get Aiton and McGee going in that game Good. five loss. Um, and now that there's a little bit more respect after Mikel Bridges, the game he had for CP3 to be able to operate uh, in a little more space. So, yeah, you got to trust the vet here to at least uh, put up his best effort to try to close this one out and get out of the first round. Definitely. And I think they will. And I would just throw in there too. Mikael Bridges was so damn good in that last game. Obviously, Monty Williams, you know, went to him and said, you need to take Brandon Ingram out of this game and, and really as many people as you can at once. Uh, and, and I really believe in him, uh, what he was doing there. And he'll continue to get those level of minutes of 42 or so in this one. Uh, so you might consider those for him as well. Some, some, some props for Mikael on both sides of the ball. But that is all the time we have for you guys in this one. Make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page. Continue to follow along with us as we roll through these NBA playoffs with each and every day with videos for you. And until we see you next, happy betting.